believe that probation made that mistake in scoring OV13, so it is correctly scored at zero points. Uh, then that OV is amended to zero. Thank okay. you, Your Honor. Does that amend the guideline, it the advisory guidelines? It does, yes. Judge. The, zero go ahead. to 17. Zero to 17. People Correct. concur? I do agree, Judge. Amended to zero to 17. And that's from 10 to 23 to zero to 17. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And uh, would it be possible to get a small cup of water when Mr. Flowers is going to allocute? Sometime before he allocutes, he's losing his voice. I don't have water for him, Counsel. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Any other amendments, deletions, or amendments to the PSI? Uh, nothing. Allocution. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask for some of the following relief, and then I'll go into more of allocution. But in terms of, okay. in terms of, um, this case would be an ideal case for a delayed sentence, not the typical delayed sentence that is a reduction, but to give the court an opportunity to assess how Mr. Flowers does on probation, uh, to determine whether jail or straight probation is a is is the appropriate option. Uh, I know that's kind of an odd request because it doesn't happen usually unless there's a reduction by the prosecutor. But we're just asking for a straight delay for you to assess how he complies. Uh, the other thing we're going to ask for is no or minimal jail time in light of the change of the guidelines and in light of everything that I presented in the sentencing memorandum um, or, or a reduced amount of jail time from the 12 months that is recommended. Uh, and also, we're going to ask that you allow Mr. Flowers to use the internet for work purposes only, um, and I'll get into that more later. So that's kind of what, what we're looking at in terms of what I'm going to ask of the court. And I spent a lot of time with Mr. Flowers, Larry, and Larry tells me about an addiction to pornography, and he's, he's glad that he's over it. But he told me, and I read that report, he is very sorry that these ladies had to be the catalyst to get him <coughs> over that addiction. And it, it was a weakness that he had, and he's just glad that he's finally over it. But unfortunately, there were casualties along the way, and he feels very badly that these ladies were victims because of it. He's taken the steps to, to heal himself. He has apologized to the to his family. He's he will apologize to the victims, either directly today or indirectly through the court if they're not here. Um, he went in to seek an assessment to see what was wrong and to frankly to try to get a reduction in a, in a charge and to to see if the court would understand a little bit more about what's going on. And we did attach that. Uh, he is actively in treatment with Beth Herman and. Uh, she may be here today. I don't think she's able to come, but she was possibly going to be here today. Um, and that would be a good a person to continue treatment with. He's hoping to be able to see her soon after today. Um, he's comfortable with her, and he's making excellent progress. Um, all of his electronic devices are an open book. He was fortunate enough to have bond conditions that didn't prohibit that. His family can fully look at anything uh, that he has in terms of his phone, his laptop, anything like that. Uh, and there's no, more any, there's no longer any secrets. He's been fully compliant with his bond conditions. And really, when you put things into perspective, Larry just wants to spend the rest of his life with his family and his grandkids. That's, of course, he's working, trying to you know, pay the bills and things like that. But his main priority in life at this point is to, to be together with his family. He's got the two daughters, the four grandchildren, all boys. One of them, of course, we mentioned is a special needs. And that, the longer he's away from this boy, will be sort of a negative effect on the special need grandchild with the autistic uh, tendencies. Uh, he, he, he's an integral part of their life. He attends the wrestling, uh, social events, um, band, concerts, school plays, everything like that. He, he doesn't miss it unless he's deathly ill or, of course, in jail. And uh, 
He's just hoping to minimize the time away from these children, not for himself, well, sure, certainly for himself, but more importantly, so they can participate in these events with his, their grandfather. And, uh, you know, the medical issues, we, I, I did mention that he, he, he goes into these, uh, for these injections for this uh, debilitating back pain. Uh, he has a, he had a shot on March 9th. He's hoping if there's jail time, and we're anticipating there's probably going to be some jail time, uh, that he can report on March 24th, the day after the next series of uh, shots. It's scheduled for May 23rd. And that's, of course, at your discretion. But he's hoping that that could be a consideration. Um, because I doubt they'll have these type of shots in jail. That's March 23rd. Yeah, March, March 23rd, right. That's what I said, I think. Uh, he also has a CPAP machine that he uses, and uh, he's got a lot of issues. He's got constant medical uh, doctors to see. So we're hoping that if he is given jail time, a lot of it could be held in abeyance so he can uh, be on a home detention, home tether, home confinement for only for medical or court-ordered activities. And of course, he would sacrifice all the time with the children's events and grandchildren events like that. So I'm throwing that out there for your consideration as well. Um, the cost of jail, of course there's reimbursement with the jail, but he's on Social Security, uh, $2,300 a month. If he's given a 12-month jail sentence, which actually would be 10 months, but in terms of Social Security, that would be 11 months of payments that he would not be entitled to get and he could never recoup because they the way I understand any portion of a month that you're incarcerated above 30 days you lose your benefits for that month and if you get the benefits they come back and garnish you and collect them so they're pretty aggressive that way so my calculations it's over $25,000 if he's given 12 months which would actually be 10 months that would be the amount so I think in, in lieu of a jail or a lengthy jail the statute does allow for a fine of up to $5,000, so I think the court could use that as a, a tool of punishment, either in lieu of jail or in addition to jail with reducing the jail sentence that you <coughs> have in mind right now. Uh, so that's another alternative. He also tells me that he has, well, he's given me money to pay everything that the court requires in terms of fines and costs, unless, of course, there's a fine. but. Everything that's on the recommendation, I think it was about $1,500, he, he will pay that today, regardless of whether he goes to jail or not. And as I mentioned, he wishes to apologize to the, the ladies, and he's planning on doing that today during his allocution. The recommendation also calls for sex offender treatment. Um, this is not a hands-on sexual assault case. So I believe the treatment that he's getting with Beth Berman is sufficient to address his needs. He will tell you that he is a lot of bad things about a porn, pornographic addiction, but that, that he's, he's completely stopped cold turkey in terms of that. And that um, is continuing with the support of Beth Berman and his family and everything else. So I think that any sort of outside sex, sexual um, counseling um, wouldn't be an added benefit. It would just be another thing for him as a requirement of probation. So I think if we could work her into the treatment program, that would be ideal for, for Larry. Um, in terms of the internet, um, he's been fully compliant with the bond conditions. He's able to leave the state, report with pretrial services, and do these deliveries with the, his, uh, his current appointment. Um, even if he has some short period of time away, he likely will be able to maintain his appointment. But if without the internet and without the ability to, to get routes and do that and check the schedules, there's, there's no way he can keep this appointment. But uh, we're going to ask that, that he be allowed to be permitted to use the internet just for work purposes. Also, if that's not an option, we would ask that internet be allowed in the home but so that his wife could use it and he not be 
permitted to use it. Another alternative is if he is permitted to use the internet for either his current job or his uh, new job, or looking for a new job, if he loses this employment, um, that he be allowed internet for that purpose only, and that the probation department have allowed access to search any of his electronic devices to see that he's fully compliant with no pornography or anything inappropriate on his devices. So I'd like to throw that out there as a humble request for you to consider. I know that's probably not part of your normal policy with probationers, but we're asking that, that you allow that for, for Larry's case. And finally, um, he'd like to see Beth for treatment this Thursday, and uh, he's hoping to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. What's your name, sir? Larry Flowers. Mr. Flowers, is there anything that you would like to say? <laughs> yes, I would like to address the uh, ladies that I have, that are, uh, uh, that I've offended first, and then talk to you a little bit about this. So, go ahead. You may address the court with any, any statements that you make, you make them directly to the court. If they, if they include Apologies or statements to the victim, that's fine. But I need to stay facing this way. Yes, sir. Okay. I would, uh, I would like to uh, say to the three ladies, uh, one is in the courtroom, uh, Kathleen, um, Hillary, and... Uh, you don't have to use their names. Hmm? Don't, don't use their names. Okay. And... Uh, Apologize to them uh, for for doing this terrible thing to them. Um, as I went through the evaluation and starting to see Beth, I saw very quickly what had happened to me. Um, porn is a terrible thing. It affects your mind, how you think about things. And I've read some things about it taking a month, two, even up to six months to get it out of your system. Um, I will never return to that. I'm, I will never get back to anything that is even close to breaking the laws of our land. Uh, I've never wanted to be in that position, and I don't know how I allowed myself this addiction or vice, but it happened to me, and I'm deeply sorry. Um, I'm ashamed of myself, uh, disgusted. Um, if I could, I would get on my knees and apologize to them right now, but I don't want to make it look like an overkill. But I would, anytime they wanted me to, from this day forward, I would do it daily in front of them and ask for their forgiveness. Um, their forgiveness wouldn't be for me, um, but if they can forgive, then maybe they can move on with their lives um, and put this behind them. I am deeply sorry for what I did to them. Uh, the anguish and pain that I must have caused them and their families. I also caused that pain to my own families, and I've apologized to them and sworn to them, each individual, that I'll never do anything that's outside the law again, and that I will keep my focus on my family and my grandkids for the rest of my life. Um, along with that, I have total respect for these three ladies even though I did this terrible, horrendous thing to them. And it was bothering me, and I was um, trying in my own mind to get out of doing that anymore. I don't know if I would have fessed up that I had done it, but I was getting ready to stop when I was discovered. And uh, I wish, I just wish they didn't have to be the catalyst to stop me and all this uh, happen. I, if I could reverse it, I would. Um, I would do anything for these three ladies in the future that they wanted me to. I would wash their windows, run errands, mow lawns. If they just want me never to be in their life or ever be seen again, I would, uh, I would uh, like to possibly uh, donate monies to their favorite charities. Uh, this porn thing is an awful addiction. I'd like to get on in a, uh, any kind of a, uh, a group an advocacy for getting rid of all porn in the United States and the world, and getting rid of strip clubs. That those girls are someone's daughters. They deserve a better shape. 
and uh, I just I just think those things need to be removed. It's it's uh, it's too bad that I had to get to this point in my life, in my 70s, to to do these terrible things, but I did, and I apologize completely to everyone for my indiscretion. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank um, you. Just move down. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Can you just uh, share with me your full name and for the record? Yes, Kathleen Ann Bassa. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Let me start by expressing how horrified I am to be before you today. In all my 56 years, I would have never believed I would be in a position of defending my privacy and speaking to it publicly. As a young lady growing up in a large family of three sisters and three brothers, my mother sat with her girls and shared what was and was not appropriate behavior from us and more importantly from another person. It shaped in many ways how I conduct myself and what I will not accept in others. What has brought us here today is exactly that. I will not accept the heinous, depraved, repulsive, and abhorrent actions of this defendant. This grown male, not man, has clearly mistaken any kindness I gave for weakness. I had an expectation of privacy in a public restroom, just as I do at home, locked door and all. Defendant decided to take that from me that day, intentionally causing emotional distress, anxiety in restrooms, dressing rooms, etc. My life has been invaded by questions from peers regarding this case, and strangely enough, none know I'm even involved. I chose to lie about hearing or knowing anything about this. For six months, the dreadful nightmares and reality of a co-worker with no moral compass nor character have robbed me of feeling safe in public. Police officers, detectives, attorneys, and perhaps yourself have viewed the videos and I'm left to feel embarrassed, shamed, and humiliated. By way of their chosen occupations, they are now involved in my life, not my choice. This ends with the choice you will make in sentencing. I'm smart enough to realize it must be based on a legal versus moral charge of depraved behavior. When doing so, I would ask you consider the fact he has pled guilty to these unforgivable acts and knowingly took away my freedom from unauthorized intrusion of my personal space. You must have a mother. Ponder how you would feel if she perhaps, a daughter, a sister, were violated in this manner. After all, he has no conscience. He has a mother, a wife, daughter, and grandchildren, yet he still chose this disgusting act to fulfill a pathetic desire. And I want to make one more statement. I, I listened to what the attorney, the defense attorney said, and um, I, I don't, I'm a casualty? I'm a casualty? No, I'm not. I'm not a casualty. I'm a survivor, and I want you to make him understand what it does to women, what he did to me. I can't see getting past. I'm going to work on it, but I want you to consider that when you sentence him, and I want him to understand what it feels to be videotaped in a personal space, and the only way that's going to happen is if you put him in jail. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Flowers, sir, I need you to stand. I was going to have him stand the whole time, but he does have limitations, so I didn't. I just wanted him to stand with me. I ladies. appreciate the limitations. He's yeah. going to stand. Right now, yes, of course. Yes. A number of things occurred to me as I prepared for the sentencing and particularly when I read the PSI. I will note for the record that counsel has indicated to the court that he, had, he took no exception to any of the other information in the pre-sentence report. 
this report indicates quite clearly, Mr. Flowers, that this was not your first occasion placing cameras in public uh, spaces. It makes reference to one other occasion that clearly was a different location as the uh, PSI points out, there was some distinguishable characteristic about the bathroom and what was captured that led them to the conclusion unmistakably that this was not the first location that you had planted a camera. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. <coughs> the other thing that occurred to me as I've read the PSI, is that apparently at your place of employment, you were watching pornography on your computer there during the course of your employment. Now what that suggested to me is, first and primarily, that if someone had brought that to the attention of management, then maybe this would have been averted because I assume that management would have taken the appropriate steps to address this. And perhaps that would have spared these victims of what they fell victim to. And then finally, the circumstance in this case presents where your actions violated the most intimate and private moments that one engages in when they go to the restroom. Yes. That's the most private and intimate yes. moment. And one does not expect to be videoed when they're in one of their most private and intimate mm -hmm. moments. And so you, the conduct raises to the level that it violated that. Yes. And this victim.